Hello everyone and welcome to this video on how to fit a quadratic latent growth curve model in the M plus software. In this video I want to show you how simple it is to specify pretty much any kind of standard growth curve model in the M plus software by using their specific syntax for such growth curve models that allows you to pretty much specify any kind of um, non-special growth curve model with a single line of code in the model statement. In case you're new to this channel, I present weekly stats tutorials here usually related to latent variable models and the M plus software. So please consider subscribing to this channel and also don't forget to hit the like button in case you like this video. So here I have an example where I'm analyzing data from four time points. So I have one observed variable that reflects anxiety and this variable was repeatedly observed in the same people on four measurement occasions. The variable here is called ANX1 um, through ANX4. So it's the same variable at four different time points. You can see here in the variable names list, I use this feature um, uh, that M plus offers where a variable that has the same name but only differs in terms of the enumeration at the end can just be hyphenated like this. So this statement ANX1 hyphen ANX4 tells M plus that there are actually four variables that are called ANX1, ANX2, ANX3, and ANX1. So that's quite practical when you have a long variable list where the variables only differ in terms of their number at the end. Also in this example, I'm using a summary data set, which you can see from the fact that here and the data command, I included the statement type, which tells M plus what kind of data is in the summary data set. In this case, I have a mean vector in there and a covariance matrix. And so that is in contrast to analyzing individual data where you have a score for each person. That's not the case here. Here we're only analyzing a vector of means. So we have four means in this data set and then the covariance matrix with four variances and six covariances. And so when you do that, when you analyze summary data in M+, you also have to give the sample size because obviously the sample size cannot be determined from summary data, whereas it could be determined from individual data by just counting the number of rows. But with summary data, that isn't possible. And so therefore, we also have to include the N ops subcommand here that tells M plus the sample size based on which these means and covariances were computed. So sample size is 789 in this case. If you had individual data, um, all the other commands would be the same. The only difference would be that you would omit the type command and the NOPS command because those then wouldn't be needed because M plus would determine the means and the covariance matrix as well as the sample size directly from your individual data. Okay, so then you can see that for a quadratic growth curve model, we only need a single line of code in M plus. And so far, this is actually not a quadratic growth curve model yet. So far, this is just a linear growth curve model, which you can see from the fact that here in the model statement, I have just two latent variables specified at this point. And I did this to show you also how you can very easily move from a linear growth curve model in M plus to a quadratic growth curve model. That's useful because oftentimes we begin a growth curve analysis with the simpler linear growth curve model to see if that fits. And then if that doesn't fit, then um, oftentimes we will try out a quadratic growth curve model as well in the next step. And so in M plus, you can very easily change the setup from a linear growth curve model to a quadratic growth curve model. So if you specify it, if you ran the model like this, you would get a linear growth curve model. But in order to get a quadratic growth curve model, you just simply add another variable name here of your choice for your quadratic factor. So in this case, I'm calling this factor quad, Q-U-A-D. And then M plus knows, okay, there's going to be an intercept factor in this model. There's going to be a linear component factor, and there's going to be a quadratic component factor now. 
And then the, the rest of the specification stays the same. So this is the specification that um, indicates the loadings actually for a linear growth curve model, but it doesn't have to be changed in M plus for a quadratic growth curve model. All you need to do is just simply add this additional variable name here of your choice and then M plus will know that there's also supposed to be a quadratic factor in the model. Now you, there's nothing else that you need to specify in the model command when you use the special syntax in M plus for growth curve models with this bar symbol here. You don't, for example, have to indicate that the means of the growth factors should be estimated. That will be done automatically, even though for conventional factor models, means would typically not be included. But since we're using the special M plus syntax here for growth curve models, M plus will automatically also include the mean structure into the analysis. Also, we don't have to tell M plus that all of the observed variable intercepts or additive constants should be fixed to zero. This is also something that M plus will do by default when this type of specification is used. So all of the parameters that you typically want to see in a growth curve analysis will then be estimated and output by M plus automatically by default. So also, for example, the covariances between all the growth factors as well as error variances, all the loadings will be specified in the way that we want. And so there's really not, not much that you have to do. The only thing or one thing that you should be aware of is that this model here assumes that we have equal spacing between the different measurement occasions. So equal amounts of time, for example, one year or one month between each pair of these adjacent variables. If that's not the case, then you have to rethink your loadings and you have to um, specify the loadings according to the time interval differences that may exist. So this is a very simple example where the spacing of these variables was always exactly the same. So this shows you that it's a whole lot simpler to specify a standard latent growth curve model using the syntax in M plus as opposed to using the conventional syntax for confirmatory factor analysis in M plus where you would use by statements and where you would individually have to specify each factor and you'd have to make sure that you include the mean structure, that you correctly specify your intercepts for the observed variables and so on. All of that work then you can save when using this one line of code syntax, so to say, for growth models. Now, of course, this doesn't work when you have a more complicated case, some sort of special type of growth model, but for um, a lot of the special, or a lot of the standard growth curve analyses, you can use this, and then you're done very quickly with your syntax. In the output command here, I requested sample statistics so that I could take a look at the observed variable means, covariances, and correlations. That's often useful to um, um, make sure that everything looks correct and to better understand the results of the uh, model as well. And then stdyx is a command that allows us to output the completely standardized solution, for example, um, factor loadings that are completely standardized. In the case of a growth curve model, typically the standardized loadings are not so interesting. However, what we are often interested in with growth curve models are the correlations between the factors so that we can see, for example, whether there's a um, relationship between intercept and slope factor. And so in the standardized solution, you then also get the latent correlations as opposed to just the covariances that you would get in the unstandardized solution. I hope you found this video useful. Again, please subscribe to this channel if you're interested in these topics and also don't forget to hit the like button, check out the description for additional resources and leave a comment in the comment section if you like. And I'll see you next time.